Okay, before moving further with our videos on Sisyphus and his boulder, let's make things easier for us, shall we? So, why? Why make things easier? Uh, why is it hard now? You know? So, the thing is, we have these force vectors right here, right? And they are right now not easy to solve. Why? Because, say, you have a coordinate system, right? Like this. Or uh, may maybe let, let me draw a straighter line uh, here. And shit, that's not a straight line. Ah, yeah, like this. Okay. So you have a coordinate system and it has two axes, right? X and Y. And if you see here, these vectors are not really in X and Y. It's between them, right? The F1 vector is right here and the normal, normal force vector is right here. And the only force which is in some axis is the force of gravity, right? So what I'm planning to do is to make these force vectors easier by making them, you know, like converting them into their, you know, like X and Y axis components and stuff, you know, yeah, something like that. So let me just copy these from here and paste it here so that we don't make our Sisyphus diagram unhappy, right? Because it will get messy otherwise. And let us draw our coordinate system like this, okay? And dotted lines, boom, 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 and yeah, something like this. Okay, okay, cool. Now, let me tell you about how to make these vectors go, you know, like boom, boom, you know, like convert them into their horizontal and vertical parts. Okay, cool. So, you know, let's say take a vector v. Okay, let me draw uh, a vector here. Vector v, not the velocity vector, but in general, a vector v. And it has an angle, let's say theta. Just to generalize the thing, theta with the horizontal. Okay. Now remember what vectors are. Vectors have both the magnitude and a direction, which is the angle, right? All right, so we have an angle theta and a vector v. So how are we supposed to convert that into its horizontal component and its vertical component? How are we supposed to do that? Let me just name this right here, v sub x and v sub y for its vertical and you know, horizontal uh, component. And let's solve for this, okay? If we convert this vector and shift it right here, okay, now let me try to do that. I don't think it will be possible. And, okay, okay, yeah, it's not possible. Anyway, if we, you know, like transform it right here, you know, shift it right here, you will see that this forms a triangle and that's easy for us to go okay and that's a right triangle to be very you know precise yeah and that is very nice for us because we can just apply the pythagorean theorem and find the things that we want right so for v sub y for v sub y okay we learned that the perpendicular over the hypotenuse is sine theta right let me write that down here or maybe let me uh you know like convert this okay sorry about that yeah let me yeah so let me write it down here sine theta equals perpendicular over hypotenuse okay and what is the perpendicular here over you know of theta it's v sub y okay v sub y and what is the hypotenuse here hypotenuse is our vector v okay our vector v cool and if if you cross multiply this you know like you know cross multiply this you will get the result v sine theta v sine theta equals v sub y wow that's that's pretty nice 
So you know that the value of V sub Y equals our velocity vector, the magnitude, be very precise. Okay, let me just make the absolute value sign here, which indicates that we are taking the magnitude, okay? The magnitude of the velocity, you know, sorry, V vector, not velocity, sine theta equals the V sub Y, the vertical component of the V vector. But what about the V sub X? Okay, so here we will take the cos theta. Cos theta is nothing. Cos theta is nothing but the base over the hypotenuse. Okay, so we have the base V sub X, right? This is the base of theta. And we have our velocity vector. To be very specific, the magnitude of the velocity vector. And if we cross multiply, if we cross multiply the magnitude of velocity, not velocity vector, it's V vector. I'm really sorry, okay, I've been fumbling, okay. Uh, v vector times cos theta times cos theta equals V sub x. V sub x. Really nice. So now we know that V sub y equals the magnitude of the V vector times sine theta and V sub x equals the magnitude of our vector times cos theta. Cool. So let me just switch it all off and bring back our, not this, but this. Yes, this. This one is really nice. Yeah, okay. So we will do that for F1, okay? For the F1. And let me make the coordinate axes again because somehow, oh, well, okay, like this. Not That's not a good coordinate system. Okay, like this. Cool. Let us solve for the force that Sisyphus is applying to the boulder. Okay, what's that? First of all, we know that there is an angle, okay, there is a direction. So what direction is it? Okay. So if we somehow make a line parallel to the, you know, like the base of the hill, we can see that this angle equals 60 degrees because, you know, like parallel lines and the exterior angle, you know, if you, you know, paid attention to your geometry class, you'll learn that these angles are equal. Okay. When they are, you know, parallel. Okay. Cool. So that means that means this angle is also 60 degrees, right? Okay, that's nice. And let's do the same here and make a X component and a Y component, a Y component. But first let me, let me uh, make it a big, bit bigger. Okay, that's better. That's really better. Okay. Uh, a vertical component and a horizontal component. Cool. So let me find the values here. The F1 cos theta. Okay. F1 cos theta. And to be very specific, the magnitude okay, of F1 cos theta is F1 times cos 60. Cos 60 degrees, which is f1 times root 3 by 2. So that is the, you know, f1, f1 sub x vector, the value of f1 sub x vector. Okay, we just found that right here. No, 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 a different color, please. Thank you, right. f1 sub x. And about the f1 sub y, we know that that is equal to the magnitude of f1 vector times sine theta because that is the you know perpendicular right equals the magnitude okay I, I haven't written the absolute value sign here because that is you know understood in my opinion because i've not written the arrow up here which makes sure that it's a magnitude it's a scalar okay so f1 sine 60 Okay, here, okay, okay. I have made a mistake here. Cos 60 is one half. Shit. Okay, that's not right. 
it's one half don't don't do like yeah i'm ashamed but it happens to the you know best of us right so sin 60 is root of it no like 3 and uh, 3 by 2 yes yes so that is f1 times root 3 over 2 okay so that is our v sorry our f1 vertical component uh, okay here cool so we just found that right so what did we do again we just split the things into their vertical and horizontal component and we use some basic trigonometry to solve for it you know and especially the pythagorean theorem because it's a 90 degrees right so we just found the horizontal component of f1 the sisyphus force and the vertical component of f1 again the sisyphus force here and here and we're going to use them to find things related to this right 